Something else interesting just happened, uh, Michael, and that is that Trump's former Attorney General, Bill Barr, just went on FNC and talked about all of this. So let's listen. What people are missing is that all the other documents taken, even if they claim to be executive privilege, either belong to the government because they're government records, even if they're classified, even if they're uh, subject to executive privilege, they still belong to the government and go to the archives. Let me just say, uh, I think the driver on this from the beginning was, the, was you know, loads of classified information sitting in Mar-a-Lago. People say this was unprecedented. Well, it's also unprecedented for a president to take all this classified information and put him in a country club, okay? And how, how long is the government going to uh, try to get that back? You know, they jawbone for a year. They were deceived on the voluntary uh, actions taken. Uh, they then went and got a subpoena. They were deceived on that. Uh, they feel, and the record, the facts are starting to show that they were being jerked around. And and so, how long, you know, how long do they wait? Michael, your thoughts? Well, I mean, you'll forgive me if, if I don't accept Tim as the voice of legal or moral authority, having watched how he behaved during his time as Attorney General and the things that went on during that. So, um, aside from his comments, it's not good. Uh, to see this kind of information down there. It's not good to have classified information. You're completely correct that these documents belong to the American people. I, I, I think that, you know, I've, I've been one on, on your channel since, let's step back a little bit, and I do that about these folders. Those folders are sometimes reused. It, it honestly looks like the people packing those boxes, whoever went through throwing clothes and empty folders or whatever it was in there, and, and all, this, all these newspaper clippings, that they were about as disorganized as his legal challenge has been thus far to the search. So I... I, I I, it, it's not a good picture for Trump. There's no possible way to spin it that it is. Um, it, it, at the same time, it's a sign of complete disorganization and, uh, and, and hopefully no damage to the national security. We don't know yet, um, but uh, that's, we'll see. Well, that's where Juliet comes in. I mean, the clothing yeah. items are sort of a curiosity. I'm not sure why there were so many clothes stuffed into these boxes, but that's an aside. The real trouble is the top secret and sensitive compartmented information that was thrown in willy-nilly. Are you concerned, Juliet, about the empty yeah. folders that are in there that are marked classified and confidential and there's nothing in them? Exactly. I, I think that's exactly right. When I re first read the story about what was disclosed, it was the emptiness that ends up being the story rather than the substance. And the reason why is because uh, these, these documents and these classification levels are often viewed in secure rooms or secure areas, not simply because sources and methods are, be, are being disclosed, it's because you want to ensure that they aren't duplicated or lost. And so there's a sort of tight control over the document itself. So now we have folders that are empty. Have they been Xeroxed? Have they been, have been pictures been taken of them? We don't know. And that gets to the second point. One of the things that's clear about this issue, Mar-a-Lago, and why you're getting people like Bill Barr sort of speaking out, is it's really simple, right? I mean, it really is. All, you know, all the Russia stuff and everything else going on with Trump. This one's simple. He had documents he shouldn't have. And then here's where it gets tricky for Trump. Once told he has documents he didn't, he shouldn't have, even if he was careless, even if that's the explanation rather than something more nefarious, right? Even if it was just clear, uh, 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 being careless, he did not take that opportunity, nor did his lawyers, to then become more careful and hand those documents over. And so I think while we focus on the picture, I actually think the obstruction charges are going to end up being really relevant because they show, uh, they show his, uh, Trump's team's unwillingness to be more careful. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, of course. But even if it, so that if it was carelessness, why did, why, why all this hiding and in fact lying, as the Department of Justice says, uh, as regards these documents? So this story obviously continues beyond just the picture and, and the clothing and everything else. Yeah, those are good questions. And Michael, um, it's interesting to hear, I think, from Bill Barr, not so much because he's necessarily the moral authority on it, but somebody slipped him some truth serum because he's now just saying all of this out loud. Another thing he said is he thinks that the special master request is a red herring. Do you think that the fact that the judge has released this inventory, do you think that makes it more or less likely that she's going to agree to a special master to now look through everything? 
you know, I, I was really uh, struck by the number of documents that were not classified in the photos and documents. There's a section down there and there's thousands and thousands of those. Um, I, there's no harm for her to issue a special or to grant the request for a special master. There's nothing. It doesn't really hurt if she does. It doesn't really help if she does. It's just but sort doesn't of a it normal slow it down, Michael? I mean, if she does, doesn't it just slow down to, the investigation? Not, not enough. And I think that that kind of falls on deaf ears when the when the government already knew that there were documents there in February, and then they wait to execute a search warrant six, you know, six months later. So I don't think they can come in now and say, Judge, we can't even take a week for somebody to look at this because you know this slows us down. And I would say, well, what were you doing between February and August? You know, as, as you were kind of trying to make nice and get the documents. So I don't think it really has a, it, it has a significant I impact here. Um, again, th this, there's no way to make this look good. Th th I mean, he's got these documents and there's, there's, they're there. You know, but he's done, he, he has done what he does well, and that is to put a buffer between him and and the and criminal charges. I mean, does anybody actually believe that he walked around the Oval Office with boxes and put all this stuff in himself? Do you notice that all the declarations and all the communications and all the correspondence, there's a buffer between him and the government? The same thing he did when he had Michael Cohen. The same, you know, he, he put somebody in the middle that he can then turn around and blame. And he's been a master at that. It doesn't always work, um, but but he, he's done that. And I see that here in these lawyers that are making these certifications. They need to be thinking about 1001 violations, which is a federal crime. And they need to be lawyering up because if, if they've come in and made false statements to investigators, then, then they've got a problem.